Hallelujah. First Samuel chapter 3, verse 21 says, God appeared again. We serve thee again and again, God. He is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15. Whatever he did before, he can replicate it today and even tomorrow. He is our ever present helper in time of need. He appeared again in Shiloh unto Samuel by his word. By his word. In other words, the word of God is set for us for great encounters that we see God, we encounter God. Psalm 119 verse 18, he said, Open thou my eyes. He's talking about the inner eyes. Open thou my eyes that I might see great and wondrous things out of thy law. Because when you see those wonders, you become a wonder. It is what you see you become. He said, Looking unto the perfect law of liberty with open face, we are changed from glory to glory. Second Corinthians chapter 3 verse 18. He said they looked unto him, their faces were lightened, and they were not ashamed. We change into what we look intently, what we gaze intently, what we behold continually and continuously. We change into such things. And if it is the wrong thing, we change into them. If it is the right thing, we change. So as we behold the word of God, the word of God begins to move us from one wave of glory to the other. So there is an encounter with his word. Samuel encountered God and God appeared through the ambience of his word to him. And that is what it is. This encounter with the Holy Spirit is mountain of divine encounters. Encounters, not just encounter. For that first Samuel chapter 3 verse 21 says, God appeared again. That is encounters. I pray you are going to have divine encounters today by the ambience of the word of God. That the word of God will enter you. Psalm 119 verse 130. The entrance of the word of God giveth light. That the word of God will enter you. That anything disturbing the word of God from entering you, I command them to be removed today in the matchless and most powerful name of Jesus. You shall not be bewitched again. Every evil covering over your life, I command them to disappear. Galatians chapter 3 verse 1, the Bible says, O you foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? Paul writing to the Galatians, have you started in the spirit and you have ended up in the flesh? In other words, they were seeing the word. They were turning into God because the word of God is God. The word of God is Jesus. John chapter 1 verse 14 says the word was made flesh. That is Jesus walking the streets of men. And just don't forget that when you are born again, it's the word of God that gives birth to you. So we are the word of God walking the streets of men. So if we ever get out of the word of God, it's like fish getting out of water. The word of God is our natural habitat. Okay, that is the way it is. So we can begin to manifest the spiritual things of God. That is the thing. The supernatural is natural to us. That's why when you begin to get into the word of God, the mind of God will be found in you. And you begin to operate with supernatural intelligence, which is higher, 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 higher than artificial intelligence and human intelligence. Human intelligence makes you a genius and even you'll be noised abroad. Jesus Christ for 30 years operated with human intelligence. That's the highest level. And even lawyers were standard in Luke chapter 2. And in Luke chapter 2 verse 49, he said, I must go about my father's business. Okay? That is the, the, the great thing. My father's business. The kingdom's business. So because he was kingdom minded, he operated at the highest level of human intelligence and he astounded even lawyers and others who were there. But the thing is that when he turned 30, he went to River Jordan, the Holy Spirit came in a bodily form, Christ, and rested upon him, he became Jesus Christ. All right. And when he became Jesus Christ, then at that point, Christ now gave him supernatural intelligence and he began to operate in the supernatural naturally. That is what it is. If you allow the word of God to dwell in you richly, the mind of Christ will become your mind. You begin to think the way God thinks. They do not find out that being a prophet, a prophet is simple, downloading uh, the mind of God. That's what it is. And then letting people to know about it with the wisdom of God. 
That is it. That's what a prophet does. That's what a prophet else does. That is a genuine one downloading the mind of God. And you cannot download the mind of God if you are not in tandem with God. So I pray today that you have a genuine encounter with God by his word. That my God will open his eyes and open your eyes, open your eyes to see the great and wondrous things out of his word. That through this program and other programs and even in your personal fellowship with God that you have divine encounters. That divine encounters will be a natural thing with you. A daily occurrence with you in the matchless and most powerful name of Jesus. That the word of God will dwell in you richly in the matchless and most powerful name of Jesus. So understand that. We have been talking about the mystery of preparation. Preparation is key. If you have not planned, you have planned to fail. If you have not prepared, then you are in trouble. Second Chronicles chapter 27 verse 6, it says, Jotan became great. He became great. Why? Because he prepared his ways before the Lord. Preparation is something wonder if you have not prepared you are prepared to fail Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 3 says at the end it must speak whether you are prepared or not so if you are prepared it will speak it will show it will show so you need to prepare you need to sit down to count the cost we have said that in the first and the second one Luke chapter 3 Luke chapter 14 verse 28 he said who is it that built the tower without sitting down first to think whether if he starts he can finish it if not, he will start, he will not finish, he will become a mockery. If you don't want to be a mockery, a wanderer, and a vagabond on planet Earth, you must come in tandem with the, with the word of God, with God and plan. With God, having your foundation and premise with things of eternal value. Don't just plan out of order with God. Everything that comes in your plan must have an eternal value in place. So understand it. You t when you're talking about preparation, it is setting yourself. Setting yourself is taking a position, taking a quality position in life and in God. That is what it is. In the first segment, we explained that in Second Chronicles chapter 15, verse 15, he said, The battle is the Lord and not your battle. In verse 17, he says, Set yourself, take your position, prepare yourself, for you shall see the salvation of the Lord. In other words, those that don't prepare themselves, set themselves, they can't see the salvation of the Lord. That is the way it works. So we must understand this. Preparation is important. And preparation is a very personal thing. Jotan prepared himself. It's personal. You can't prepare others when you have not prepared yourself. You cannot be a crocodile outside when you are a lizard in your home. Charity begins at home. Jesus said, you shall be my witnesses after you have had an encounter yourself with the Holy Ghost. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. He says, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. One, then you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, and the uttermost parts of the earth. Not uttermost part of the earth. You will just want to be an elephant when you have not become an ant in your house. No, it doesn't work that way. You prepare, and then it is step by step. Though your beginning was small, your later end shall greatly increase. Job chapter 8 verse uh, 7. And the Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 8 says, Better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. So it is better you end well. You can start badly but end well. But when you plan, at least you have this order in your life. You have this focus in your life. Then if it is out of God's will, God will interrupt you. But let it be that God will find that you have a direction. So it gives you joy when you have a direction and you have short, short goals every day. Premised on heavenly things, premised on eternal values. You find the fulfillment of it every day gives you this joy. And the cumulative joy is what matters. So, but if you live a, a planless life, then you are in trouble. I have advised this late 24 hours employ you every day. So you can plan the 24 hours. So you are accountable to God and 24 hours. And that way you see your life will have a direction, will have meaning. You are not living a clueless life. You live a life that is structured upon something. And I pray that it will be upon godliness. For First Timothy chapter 4 verse 8. Say godliness is profitable unto all things. And that way you are on the same page with God. Amos chapter 3 verse 3. 
So I pray you'll understand this very well and you don't make mistakes. You have to take your position. You have to do what you ought to do and make sure you encounter God directly for yourself. Praise God. And then we, we began to see that God in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 showed his planned life. He says, God said, let us make man in our own image and in our likeness and let them have dominion and down and down. And verse 27, the Bible says he created man and woman. So he didn't just go to create, he planned it. Not only he planned it, he made it clear. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 3, he said, write it down so that he that read it may run with it. He doesn't have to be confused. He made this guy say, let us, this is the plan I have. He sold it to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. He said, let us make man in our own image. And he went about doing that. So what plan do you have for your life? What plan do you have for your family? What plan do you have for your career? What plan do you have for your academics? What plan do you have for your personal development? What plans do you have for your spiritual development, for your mental development? What plans do you have? You are just living a clueless life? No, that is not right. If you don't know the price to pay, you will never take the price. There is always a crown, but there must be a price to pay. And the price to pay comes tacitly on a planned life. If not, you are throwing about your prices to where uh, it ought not to be. What is your plan for your marriage? What is your plan for your home? You must plan. You must plan. Put your mind into motion. And I pray that my God shall open up your mind and the eyes of your mind shall be opened in the matchless name of Jesus. The mind, the mind, the mind. Because that is the seat of strategic thinking, of strategic planning. Praise God. So I pray. But briefly, in this segment, we are going to talk about getting ready. Get ready. So planning is get ready. Planning is getting ready. Mm. A man that is ready, just remember, the future does not come on our ways to somebody who is ready. The future comes on our ways to fools. And fools in this premise are those that don't plan. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 15. The labor of the foolish. Why are they the foolish? This stops everyone. Why are they the foolish? Because they don't know how to get to the city, the how to, the planning. That's what it is. They don't sit down to plan. They just begin to go to the city. So you go to the city, they are walking, but they are disturbing everybody. I pray that is not you. Because Matthew verse, chapter 6 verse 22 say, the light of the body is the eye. And if the eye be single, that is focus, your whole body shall be full of life. So you get ready. Let's look at in Exodus chapter 19 verse 10 what God says there in this realm. Exodus chapter 19 verse 10. Exodus chapter 19 verse 10 says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Go unto the people and sanctify them, consecrate them today and tomorrow. Prepare them today and tomorrow. I want you to understand this very well. Why? And let them wash their clothes. Preparation. Why? Verse 11 says, And be ready. So preparation is getting ready for what is about to happen. For what God has planned. The glory of God will only come down on a preparation on a people that are planned, on a people that are ready. That's the way it works. God will never appear unto anybody that is not ready. 10,000 people can be here, but in the midst, those who are ready, God will encounter them. You will not stop God from coming down. You can only stop him from touching you. That's the way it works. A prepared heart will always connect to God. Because that's where it starts. He said, prepare them, sanctify them, consecrate them. Let them wash their clothes. I remember God's servant was sharing and said that he was in this vision and he saw a group of people praying serious prayers on point according to the will of God with their plates they were fasting oh God give us food 
it is your will quoting scriptures but he was amazed that god was just watching in that vision and he said god these people are praying according to your will and this is your word they are quoting what is it what is happening and god said come up here and they said look at their place and he looked at their place they had feces in their plates feces means shit rubbish in their plate. Said, how can i put my blessing upon this you don't put a new one in an old white scale you have to be you have to be ready for a move look at the church have stepped into now the greatest revival that will usher in our lord jesus christ how ready are you for this revival this is not late yet you begin to check yourself sanctify yourself consecrate yourself get ready those people were putting on plates they didn't wash the plate they didn't get ready god said moses go and get these people ready today go and get them ready tomorrow let them wash their clothes he says and be ready against the third day they use two days to prepare for one day for the third day the lord will come down in the sight of all the people upon to mount sire so god comes upon those who are ready for him are you ready for the lord so it is important for you to understand this until you are prepared god will not appear for you are you prepared preparation takes time just for one day they took two days to prepare and when you are prepared it will look as if you are a fool it took almost 120 years for noah to prepare the ark and they thought he was a fool there had never been a rain in those days so talking about rain was like what's this guy talking about they never knew anything like rain talking about that god will use the rain to destroy the earth it's like what is happening but he had to prepare the ark he had to get ready and when the rain came himself and those that entered the ark were saved so preparation is key he didn't wish or think that there should be an ark he prepared for it he built an ark what is your preparation today beloved it starts with your heart that's the important thing until sin is dealt with you don't have any access look at psalm chapter 66 psalm chapter 66 you need to repent give your life to god and have a good time with god be on the same page Look at what Psalm 66 verse 18 says. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. But verily, God had heard me. He had attended to the voice of my prayer. In other words, if you still have iniquity in your heart, iniquity is ammonia. That is lawlessness. If I carry any form of lawlessness in my heart, no matter how it is, I will be separated from God. So no amount of preparation can work. So beloved, good preparation starts from the heart. That's the way it works. Second Chronicles chapter 16 verse 9. Let me show you. He said the eyes of the Lord moves to and fro the earth to stand strong upon those whose hearts are perfect before him so any preparation without a good heart towards god is vain because psalm 127 verse 1 through to the down he said watchman watches in vain if god is not there a builder builds in vain if god is not there somebody goes up early in the morning and walks late is in vain if god is not there i want you to begin to say lord I come unto you, I consecrate my life to you. I want you to rededicate your life to God, to give your life to Christ. There is no middle ground. Revelation chapter 1 verse 3 said, the time is at hand. 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 Look at what is happening. That's why Jesus said in Matthew chapter 26 verse 41, he said, watch and pray look at what is happening it is so clear that the time is at hand please 
give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not enough to give your life to him. You stand strong with him, quit sin, and serve him. Live a holy life. It's easy to live a holy life day after day. I want you to do that today from the depth of your heart. To say, Lord, I give you my life. I give you my life. I've decided to be on the same page with you. I want you to do that as I pray for you today. And I want to pray from the depths of my heart that all the voices of strangers casting spells against your head, today they crumble and die. In the name of Jesus, I pray that the reign of wisdom, the reign of knowledge, the reign of favor shall fall upon your head. In the name of Jesus, I pray today that the blood of Jesus, the water of life, the fire of God shall wash your head. In the name of Jesus, I shake off bullets of the wicked elders from your head. In the name of Jesus, any power anywhere using your hair against you, I command them to lose their hold upon you and die. In the name of Jesus, invisible loads of darkness upon your head, I command them to catch fire. In the name of Jesus, any problem brought into your life through head attacks, I command the problems to die now in the name of Jesus. Any power manipulating the heads of your children for evil, I command them to die and the manipulations to die. And I command your children to be set free today in the name of Jesus. Wicked elders of your father's house, of your mother's house, of your environment, of your city, of your nation, of the nations of the world that have been tying your head down. I command them to untie your head, untie the heads of your children. In the name of Jesus, any problem brought into your life through head attacks, brought into the life of your children through head attacks, I command such to die today. In the name of Jesus, serpents and scorpions are signed against your head. I command them to die now in the name of Jesus. Every foundational yoke upon your head, I break them today in the name of Jesus. Every bewitchment upon your head, I break them today in the name of Jesus. I decree today that by the finger of God, you move from where you are to your real level. In the name of Jesus, I decree your destiny shall explode, whether the devil likes it or not. In the name of Jesus, and I decree that the heavens shall trouble your troublers today and forever. In the name of Jesus, I decree today that your hammer reka shatara braba ba shoto ro braba dere braba dea rikro bubu shoto ro braba dere dea shall break every stubborn problem to pieces in the name of jesus i decree today that every enemy is rendered powerless concerning you in the name of jesus i decree your life your very life shall begin to hear the word of the lord and shall begin to possess your divine goals in the matchless name of jesus and every plantation of darkness upon your head upon your legs i command them to clear away in the name of jesus i decree that your seed of greatness shall begin to manifest by fire in the matchless name of jesus the holy ghost fire shall tear your life away from the grip of wicked elders in the matchless name of jesus i decree you shall not be a negative expert in the name of Jesus. Miracle interceptors assigned against your life shall die completely in the name of Jesus. I decree today that whatsoever it is that you lost in the time past, I recover all of them now. In the name of Jesus, I recover your wasted years and every power of your father's house stealing your potentials. I command them to release you and die in the name of Jesus. I, wherever you are, I decree, no voice of the enemy shall come near you. The voice of the tail shall not come near you. Beginning from today, you shall arise, you shall shine in the matchless name of Jesus, and every vulture of your potential shall meet sudden death. In the matchless name of Jesus, it is absolutely well with you. You shall not make unpardonable mistakes in the affairs of life. You shall complete your days on earth. Your days on earth shall not be cut short. In the matchless name of Jesus, you shall not be mistaken 
as a fool or for a fool in the matchless name of jesus you shall not become the basket of your time and generation you shall not become the footmark of your time and generation you shall not expire while you're still alive you shall not become history while you're still alive you shall see the end of this year this year shall not see your end you shall not end this year in the mortuary you shall not end this year on the sick bed in the matchless name of jesus you shall end this year better than you started it your last minute miracle shall locate you in the matchless name of jesus as this year is winding to an end your life shall not wind to an end with it. Your marriage shall not wind to an end with it. Your joy shall not wind to an end with it. Your children, your career, your academic pursuits, and your life pursuits shall not wind to an end with it. In the name of Jesus, congratulations, congratulations, congratulations again for weeping men endure for the night. But joy comes in the morning, Psalm chapter 30, verse 5. This is your morning of joy. Congratulations. Remember, it is loving God. It is loving people. It is touching life positively and serving our god i am fresh fire we are missionaries on assignment to connect the whole world with his love and with his presence thank you hello there are you worshiping with us for the first time congratulations you are most welcome into this great gathering this is no coincidence we believe that your steps were ordered by god and he has a plan for you you are now a candidate of God's revival. We are a generation called to worship the one true God. We do this in spirit and in truth, in kindness and in love, preaching and teaching the word of God by the power of the Holy Spirit. Here, your mind will be renewed as we connect you to God's presence, and you are now transformed into a giant of a strange order. Welcome home.